Sports pregame show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the NBA on 2K Sports. Ernie Johnson here with my esteemed colleagues, Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. In this game, we'll see the Charlotte Hornets going up against the Clippers out in Los Angeles. For Los Angeles, they're looking to come out strong and make their mark early. They have to look at this game as a great opportunity to do just that. And let us talk, guys, about DeAndre Jordan. Incredible player, but if this game comes down to the wire, we might see the hack, uh, you know. Uh, and I know you have some thoughts on this, big fella. And you don't even like us to n call it the hack a shack. Yeah, because it didn't work. It d definitely didn't work for me. So whoever they're hacking, call it them. We all know that free throws are part of the game, and it's a viable strategy. You know, he has improved on his free throws, but he has a liability in late-game situations. But as long as he hits them when he needs to hit them, he'll be okay. He has to hit at least one. Well, I think, he, you know, if you're a dominant player like Shaq was, then the hack of Shaq doesn't work because he was so dominant in other areas. But certain guys, you know, DeAndre now is starting to be dominant in other areas. So it's starting not to work as well. Uh, he's starting to increase his play and his scoring ability and, and his defense. So now the hack of Jordan doesn't have the same impact. Uh, that'll wrap it up as we take you courtside. Thank you so much for joining us. Sports checks in with our loyal viewers with the broadcast from Los Angeles. The home of the Clippers, the Staples Center. The excitement of the NBA is on the way. This is Kevin Harlan with Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. All right, ready to go? Ready to go? Tip-off goes to the Clippers. We've got a chance here to set the floor courtesy of Gatorade. All fueled up and ready to go for this one. Setting the floor for the Hornets. Williams down low with Jefferson. Kemba Walker is out there with Batum. And it's Kid Gilchrist in at the three. Six to shoot. Jordan the screen. Pierce. The shot misses. And Charlotte will go the other way with it. And, and the Clippers not known for being an outside shooting team. But they take a large amount of deep mid-range twos. As well as their fair share of three. Now here's Walker. Williams kicks to Jefferson. Shoots from the baseline. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. Nice make for him as they get the scoring started. Yeah, he gets it going, and who knows now? You know, it might be a, a really big night in store for him. For the Clippers, you think of Lob City, and it's all dunks. But the reality is, Clark, as Greg was just talking about, that just isn't the case. It really isn't. I mean, they also led the league in pull-up shots attempted by a wide margin, about 24 pull-up Jays a game. Beautiful feed off the bounce to his teammate there. Nicely done. Clark, some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, they need a basket just to regain some momentum here, Kevin. Pick by Griffin. Paul kicks to Reddick. Here's Griffin, and he gets it to go. Offensively, he can be the engine that drives them at any given time. Walker with it, screened by Jefferson. And it's Walker penetrating. And so the ball out of bounds. Jordan touched it last. Here's Kid Gilchrist. Williams kicks to Kid Gilchrist. To the inside. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. And for Big Al Jefferson, he's been a great player in this league, but, but he hasn't played on that many great teams, and he's never made an all-star team. Hard to imagine. 
And Pharrell Jefferson never making an all-star team. He's got the numbers on offense to get him there. People just feel he's probably, what, Clark, one-dimensional? Well, you know, even though the all-star game has no defense for the most part, you usually need to play a little bit of D to have a chance to get there. Now here's Paul, and Reddick kicks to Griffin. That's basket number two with his third shot off to a fast two for three. And it looks like he might just be on his A game today, Clark. Outside, Batum. Outside, Walker. Pass to Jefferson. Goes up the baseline. Charlotte again missing. The Clippers have gone two for four from the field so far today. And Reddick kicks to Paul. Clippers moving the ball around. Griffin dishes to Reddick. Shot clock at six. Stolen by Walker. Right side, Batum. Walker with a clean look. And a big pounce off the rim, but it sinks right in. Walker's got his first points of the game. Clippers trail by four. Reddick is in the corner. And a great assist by Paul as that one goes in. I, I love the ball movement there. He put that on a silver platter. Just served him up. Walker the pass to Batum. From the arc. That's his second shot and his second basket. He's two for two. And we're just over three and a half minutes into the first quarter. Paul kicks to Jordan. Back to Paul. The three. Hornets with the rebound. Outside Batum. Williams with a clean look. Jordan with the rebound. I didn't see that miss coming. I mean, he's usually been money from that range. Paul kicks to Griffin. There's the pick. Passes it to Reddit. No good. And the Hornets now going the other way. Pushing it up. Kid Gilchrist dishes to Jefferson. No dice from the high post. You know, not really his best quarter as far as scoring. Let, let's see if he can eventually get back on track. Paul goes in and fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. Last season for Chris Paul, another strong season. Yet quite a year for him in terms of media hype. Uh, he was as strong as ever on the court and off the court. And that's a great point. You know, he did kind of fly under the radar. It's hard to imagine a first team that Hall of Famer in the future could do that, but a lot of it had to do with Steph Curry yes. kind of coming on to the scene, splashing on the scene, if you will. But he is still one of the top point guards in our league. He hits one and misses one each at the line. You know, for Paul, you talk about the lack of talk about him last year. Very quietly came close to the 50-40-90 club. Clippers trail by four. Outside Griffin. Jordan the screen. Now here's Reddick. Six to shoot. That's good. And the 50 40 90 club something only elite scorers reach it and Paul came close while playing point guard he might not get the hype he used to but CP3 is very much still one of the best in our league the Clippers have gone 50 percent from the field to this point four of eight that's good from Paul Pierce on the assist by Paul and it's all knotted up a heads up aggressive play right there. Saw the smaller man on him and took it straight to the basket. Walker against Paul. And Walker kicks to Williams. Batum wide open. He fires. Hornets keep it alive. Jefferson, the third shot of the possession, finally falls for him. 
Jefferson's got six points for Los Angeles. They've gone five of nine from the field here in the first. Paul kicks to Jordan, feeds to Pierce. Jordan the screen, the tray. Paul can't get it to go. And with room like that off the pick, you have got to knock that one down. Well, you know, they did everything right, Greg. They executed. All you want is a good look at the basket. Sometimes the shots just don't fall. Al Paul. Nicholas Batum missing from long range. Paul kicks to Reddick. And there's the feed to Jordan. Picked by Griffin. Jordan the pass to Paul. Dishes it to Griffin. Goes up on the block. They get it again. No good with the layup. Charlotte is gone, just one of four from three-point range here in the first. Outside, Walker. He kicks to Kid Gilchrist. And all around the rim that time before dropping in. And it's a four-point Hornets lead. And guys, you know, last year, Marvin Williams signed a big contract, and he did not follow that up with a big production. In fact, he tied a career low in terms of his field goal percentage at only 42. And not exactly what the Hornets were expecting from their new stretch four. He's checked in for Jordan. Smith comes in for Blake Griffin. Lance Stevenson's checked in for Paul Pierce. And it's Crawford in for J.J. Redick. So an almost entirely new group in now for Charlotte. Kaminsky is checked in for Jefferson. Zeller comes in for Marvin Williams. Jeremy Lamb's checked in for Michael Kidd Gilchrist. And it's Jeremy Lin in for Kemba Walker. Now here's Paul. The Clippers need to get off a shot. And here's Stevenson for three. And the rebound goes to the Hornets. They've been beating them to a lot of those loose balls and rebounds here to start. Yeah, the half and half balls are going their way. And that's really a function of effort and intensity. You know, the ball doesn't discriminate. Whoever goes and gets it, that's who owns it. Now the thing about Marvin Williams, you know, we know he doesn't create for others. He doesn't generate a lot of blocks or steals. But, you know, the one thing he does, he can hit the boards, he rebounds well, and he's got a pretty good shot from outside. Yeah, and last season he didn't have any big numbers, but the ones that were at least respectable were in the areas you just mentioned, rebounding and three-point shooting, Kevin. He misses the free throw. Well, guys, Josh Smith, an interesting case. Uh, Clark, he shot about two triples a game last year, yet for the last three seasons, his free throw percentage has been under, surprisingly, 55%. Yeah, and that's terribly troubling. I mean, his three-point percentage improved in Houston, but the free throws, really, he can do much better than mm -hmm. that. You look at his stroke, I think it's just a matter of concentration with Josh. And he sinks the second. And with Smith and his shooting, a, a lot of it is mental. I mean, he has a terrific stroke from anywhere. The free throws are all in his head because he can make threes. He's just got to be a little more focused. And, you know, thinking again about Smith, he made some big shots for the Rockets last year, but you never know quite what you're going to get with him taking perimeter shots. Free throw drops for Lamb. And guys, over his first three seasons, no question, Jeremy Lamb has been a major disappointment. Clark, his game simply didn't seem to evolve at all over that time. Well, that's why scouting is an inexact science. You know, he was a major piece in that James Harden trade, Kevin, a few years back, but just hasn't found the traction anticipated for him. 
Clippers trail by four. Now Stevenson. He's had some playing time, but no scoring yet from him. And it's good. A delicious dime from Chris Paul there. And on the topic of Lamb, he really has everything he needs to succeed. Great length and athleticism. Was an excellent all-around jump shooter in college. For some reason, his game just hasn't translated to the NBA level yet. But I think if he can improve his motor, he's going to have an opportunity to be an impact player for a long time. Lynn kicks to Lamb. Pass to Zeller, and he overdid it there. Too much force, it looked like, on the foul, and he's called for the flagrant. Boy, a, a very hard foul that time, and the officials had to slap him with the flagrant. I mean, you can't let him get away with that kind of contact. Yeah, gee, that's an easy call for the officials to make when there's that much contact. The league is really cracking down on those sort of plays, and that one falls for Zeller. And so Zeller nails both of them. And here are the Hornets now. They lead by four. All against Land. Kaminsky dishes to Land. Kicks it to Kaminsky. He feeds it to Land. And the Hornets miss again. L.A. has gone 0-3 from three-point land. Nothing yet going outside. Another shot. And it's Smith missing. That's a surprise. I mean, really out of character for him to miss when the defense is not right up on it. And the pass to win. Charlotte moving it around. From deep. No good from Lamb. Clippers trail by four. Ball outside. He dishes it to Crawford. On the wing, Batum grabs the miss. The defense better not make a habit of giving him that shot. I mean, he doesn't miss many of them. The dish to Lynn. Back to Batum. Zeller setting the pick for Lamb. Six on the shot clock. A shot by Batum, no good. His shot's just, it's not there right now with this team leading perhaps. You know, let's focus on some other areas of the game. And really just led him to his sweet spot for that finish. Checked in. One thirty one left in the first quarter. Outside, Lynn. Pass to Lamb. Bounces high off the rim and drops. And the Hornets lead by four. Boy, Doc Rivers keeps on leading his teams to successful seasons. A former coach of the year, 
rarely has a season where his team doesn't meet expectations. And Doc Rivers passed the 700 win mark as a coach last season. He's climbing the ladder in career wins. Yeah, and, and you know, I don't know that Doc oftentimes gets enough credit for the type of coach he is. I mean, as a coach, he is well over 500 in terms of his career win percentage. And how about over 500 in playoff games as well? Stevenson kicks to Smith. And a miss there on the triple. Hornets leading by four. Lamb passes to Lynn. Feeds it to Lamb. Back to Lynn. All alone. The shot is off. And it's the Clippers taking it the other way. Here's Paul. That's good, and it's Stevenson with the assist. And just a step ahead of the D in that possession there, making the pass. Nice assist. Zeller, a screen on Paul. Too long in the paint, and he's hit with a three-second violation. For Charlotte, they have been on target from the free throw line. They're 5 of 5 in that department. And a season ago, they hit about 75% of their free throws. Here's Lynn looking for his first basket still in this one. Passes it to Lamb. Down to five on the shot clock. Rebound by Smith. And he's trying to shoot his way out of it. You know, they have the lead, but honestly, I, I think it might help if he'd be a little bit more selective tonight. Crawford's shot is good. Here is Lynn. Tie game in Los Angeles. And the second quarter will get underway just after this short break. And Blake Griffin grew up playing the game alongside his older brother. His dad was his coach. And he credits his brother for inspiring him to work at his craft. talking about uh, taking the right course we know that uh, the older brother of Blake Griffin three years older you know he played as did Blake for their dad Tommy in high school and they were terrific high school players and four-time state champions I mean it, it always helps to have a big brother who, who's kind of been there and, and done that to, and can share those experiences with you it doesn't hurt to have a dad also who was a pro player either and also a college coach and the second quarter getting underway. No team gaining an edge so far. And guys, what's your take on the Clippers so far? I just don't know that you're going to see a better quarter defensively than what we saw in the first. Really a big part of why they're on top here. The defense has been on point. Chris Paul and J.J. Redick are the guards. Inside, it's Griffin and Jordan. And it's Pierce in at the three spot. They're the group out there for the Clippers starting the second quarter. And, and Kit Gilchrist had that very funky jumper coming into the league. And prior to last year, it really worked tirelessly 
Uh, not an easy thing to do to try to change the entire form and structure of your jump shot. Driven shot is good. Charlotte in the lead. Outside, Kid Gilchrist. There's the feed to Walker. Right side, Lynn. Outside, Kid Gilchrist. Jefferson, a screen on Pierce. Just three to shoot. That's a two-pointer from Walker. Gets to the corner and buries it. And the Hornets lead by three. And Los Angeles guys uh, shooting 43% for the game. And Reddick kicks to Paul. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. Kemba Walker picks one up. For all this point in his career, Clark, it's safe to call Chris Paul one of the all-time great point guards. Yeah, without question. I mean, for a long time, it was hard to argue that Chris Paul wasn't the top point guard in the league. Even now, you can make arguments for others, but Paul is always going to be in the conversation. All right, now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. And that one misses. And with Paul, it is all about his consistency. Other point guards will have better years or stretches than him, but, but he just puts up huge numbers year in and year out, literally like clockwork. And the Hornets making a change here. Williams has checked in. And he's good on the second. You know, it's amazing to me how little fanfare CP3 gets. I mean, he's not a flashy player, but you look at his effectiveness on the court, and he's a once-in-a-generation kind of talent. I mean, he's done it all his entire career. Now, here's Walker. And it's blocked by Jordan. Good ball movement here by the Clippers. The shot by Pierce will not go. Hornets have gone two or three from the field here to open the second quarter. And it's Kid Gilchrist penetrating. Jordan with some nice D. And he thought he had a clear path to the hoop, but the defense didn't give up on that play and cut him off. Mulligan's Walker. Here's Pierce. And it's wide right. Hits off the rim. It's a neck-and-neck -neck game here in Los Angeles. Here's Lynn. And Kid Gilchrist kicks to Lynn. Gets an open look and hits. Lynn's got his first points in this one. Clippers have gone one of three to start out the second quarter. Griffin a screen on Walker. Dishes it to Reddit. Back to Paul. Five to shoot. He kicks to Reddit. Takes the three. And a great assist by Paul as that one goes in. Paul's got four assists in the game. For Charlotte, they've gone 50% from the floor in the second quarter, three of six. There's a screen by Williams. Walker dishes to Williams. Here's against Kid Gilchrist. Rebound by the Clippers. Paul kicks to Griffin. Here's Jordan. Lynn with the steal. Walker against Paul. Walker the pass to Lynn. Pass to Williams. Kicks to Jefferson. And he gets that one to go off the front iron. Jefferson's got eight points. Clippers trail by three. He lobs it up. It's tipped. Out of bounds. Charlotte takes possession. Well, that's inexcusable to throw a pass that far off the mark. Wesley Johnson's checked in for Pierce. Wesley Johnson. And here are the Hornets now. They've only given up six here in this quarter. Reddick against Lynn. 
Outside Kid Gilchrist. There's a screen by Williams. Lock at six. And Kid Gilchrist kicks to Williams. Walker. They get the rebound. You know, guys, if he does his work early, he knows when he gets in a good position, his size gives him a big edge on the glass. Paul against Walker. And the shot is good. The Hornet lead has been cut to just one point on the basket from Chris Paul. Shaked and baked with the crossover move, and that's what freed him for the score. And got him on the wrong foot and then just blew by him. Now here's Walker. Williams, a screen on Paul. Williams dishes to Lynn. Jefferson setting the pick for Lynn. It's Jefferson, top of the key. Here's Walker. Again, the miss by Walker. And Charlotte's defense it didn't really start out incredible last season, but, but over the course of the year, they climbed the race, and, and by the end of the year, they were fourth. Hornets have gone four of ten in the second quarter from the field. And there's Al Jefferson on the assist by Lynn. And that's ten points for Al Jefferson. Guys, his consistency in terms of shooting has really helped them seize control. There's the pick. Johnson kicks to Paul. On the wing, Johnson shoots the three. And another three for the Clippers. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agendas. Yeah, and it's really fun to see that kind of unselfishness. Really hard not to appreciate all the assists they've racked up. And here's Walker. After Wesley Johnson just hit the three. Just five on the clock. And here's Walker outside. Can't get it to go. Paul with the defensive effort. He's going to play his way right onto the bench and out of the game if he continues to shoot it like he has so far in this quarter. Here's the teardrop. Griffin can't get it to go in. For Charlotte, they've gone 5 of 12 from the field here in the second. Walker with it. Chris Paul covering. It's Kid Gilchrist on the wing. Screen by Jefferson. And out of bounds as Los Angeles gains possession. And, and you know what? His mind's playing tricks on him right now because he's not going to live that one down easily. Jamal Crawford, he's checked in for Los Angeles. And then for Charlotte, Kaminsky comes in for Al Jefferson. And it's Batum in for Jeremy Lin. Los Angeles has gone two or three when they've stepped beyond the arc in the second quarter. Crawford passes to Jordan. He feeds it to Reddick. He dishes it to Griffin. The pass to Jordan. He kicks it to Crawford. Rebound by Williams. Williams has got rebound number five here tonight. To the paint. And Kid Gilchrist gets it to go in. Kid Gilchrist has got five points in the quarter. And, and that's the kind of lead pass we've come to expect from him. Batum against Crawford. The dish to Reddick. Lots of room. That's good on the jump shot. Reddick's got the lead up to two now for the Clippers. Nice pass. He got the ball right into his teammate's shooting pocket. On time and on target. And, and Reddick is just an unbelievable three-point shooter. It's not just his volume. It's his pinpoint accuracy. By the end of last season, Reddick was 40% from behind the arc for his career. in for Jordan. Smith comes in for Blake Griffin. Lance Stevenson subbed in for J.J. Redick. Charlotte also making some changes. Zeller is checked in for Williams. And it's Lamb in there for Michael Kidd-Gilchrist. 
And for Redick, he knew what his NBA career would be like way back in 2005. Clark, I recall him saying, I, I think I'll be a role player like 80% of the players in the league. I, I don't expect to be a star. I'll just shoot. I'll, I'll be a team player. Yeah, and he's exactly right. He was highly decorated in college, but every scout knew his strength was shooting the basketball, and J.J. knew it as well. Mm -hmm. Here is Stevenson. Kemba Walker making his last shot. It's Crawford with the drive. He used that pick just right. Crawford's got the lead back up to two now for the Clippers. And he came off that screen, and the D just didn't get over the top of him. Yep, weren't there in time enough to challenge Greg. And when that's the case, you can mark those up for him. Now here's Walker. He has six. And that'll be Charlotte as it goes out of bounds. Hornets retain possession. Shot clock at six. Again, the miss by Walker. A, a little ambitious on that possession, trying to hit a shot in the face of that defensive pressure. Hornets have gone 7 of 16, shooting just under 50% here in the second quarter. Batum a screen on Stevenson. Pass to Batum. Out to the right wing. Here's the teardrop. Here's Walker. And he finishes nicely on the layup. Walker's got the game tied up here for the Hornets. What a job he's doing here. I mean, his second quarter has been even better than his first. And that was pretty good. There's the screen. Johnson dishes to Smith. The three. That's good from Johnson on the assist by Smith. And it's six points for Johnson. The screenplay worked ideally there, and I'm not talking about the screenplay you see in a movie theater. <laughs> Gave him more than enough room to get that shot off. Now here's Walker. He's got eight. Takes the 13-footer. Walker missing again. It just hasn't been a very good day for him, guys. They need him to start burying some of those. Kept alive. Johnson kicks to Smith. Crawford outside. Eyes yet again, and he sinks the layup. And it's a five-point Clipper lead. I tell you, he has some impressive moves in his repertoire. That's as good as it gets, but just one of many. Clark, they've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a little bit of cotton mouth here. Dry spell for sure. Lamb up top. He's guarded by Johnson. Kaminsky sets the pick for Lamb. Walker in the corner. Let's it fly. Walker missing again. Clippers leading by five. Here's Johnson. Terrific assist. A nice finish. Solid play all around. It seems that every pass they make is leading to a score here. I mean, that's just exquisite ball movement. And that's because the ball is looking for the best shot, and it's really paid off for them during the run. Boy, for Jamal Crawford, guys, it's been a really good career. Not many guys can maintain his level of quickness after 15 years in the league. I mean, but last season, he finally started to show a little wear and tear. Switch here. Pierce is checked in. Hornets trail by seven. And back to Crawford last season, he was down in field goal and three point percentage. Plus, he battled with a calf injury that ultimately kept him out of 17, 18 games late in the year. Yeah, Kevin, but, but his deep range spread the floor when he was out there. He still has that presence about him that you have to honor him. And, and he also hits some very timely shots, a dangerous assassin who always needs to be accounted for. Platoon passes to Kaminsky. 
And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. Yeah, the defender all over him. Greg, he got him good there. I mean, that's why the shot was so far off. And a moment now to look at the scoring approach in terms of where the points are coming from for the Clippers. And so far, these guys have done a fantastic job finding the opening man and getting some easy baskets. You know, one other thing that's clear is how well they're burying their jump shots here in the early going. That one misses. Not to the surprise of anyone, really, but the Clippers last year were strong at home once again. They managed to go 30 and 11 at Staples Center. Yeah, and Kevin, that makes three straight seasons for the Clippers of 30 or more wins at home. Here's Walker following the basket by Lance Stevenson. Feeds the lamp. Fires the three. The shot's good on the assist by Walker. And it's seven points for Lamb. Boy, just an excellent assist. Nice work from Kimber Walker. You know, the big thing for the Clippers is that they won some big games and staples over tough opponents. I mean, also won six of their last seven to secure the three seed in the West. Yeah, good call there. I mean, he clearly moving when he set the screen. And he lowered the shoulder, too. I mean, they were going to get him there one way or the other. I mean, that was an easy call. Spencer Hawes has checked in for Charlotte. There's 39 seconds left to play here in the half. Over in the corner, Lamb. Out left to the wing. Three on the clock. Batum with the three. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. The mechanics totally out of whack right now. He's lost his feel for the shot. Yeah, he really has. I mean, just totally out of sync. I mean, you can just see it in the numbers. Nothing going down for him right now. Boy, they keep hammering away at him inside, forcing that ball into the paint. Smash mouth basketball. And, and Clark, it's a strategy that has served them well during the course of this first half. And no good trying to get that one. And the first half comes to a close. We've got a close game going on here. Clippers ahead, up five. And now we'll send it down to Doris Burke, who's standing by courtside. Yes, Kevin, I'm here with Blake Griffin, and obviously a high-scoring half for you guys on this one, Blake. What was the key to breaking it open? Uh, it starts on defense. You know, our defense did a good job of getting stops, getting rebounds, getting down the over four. We got some easy buckets, and then, you know, shots start to fall. Blake, thank you. Kevin, a complete culture change with this organization. Thank you for the great interview, Doris. We'll be back for the third quarter of basketball following halftime. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello again, everybody. Ernie Johnson here, joined by Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. We welcome you to the Halftime Show on 2K Sports. A pretty close game for the Clippers throughout the first quarter. They never dug too deep a hole for themselves in the first period. The most they trailed by was five. They started to take control of the game in the second quarter and pulled away nicely, heading into halftime up by five. And taking a look at the Clippers, Kenny, what did you see out there? You know what jumps out at me? their efficiency on the offensive end. They shared the basketball, good shot selection. They showed a lot of patience, and that patience will be tested the rest of the way. And big fella, your thoughts on the Hornets? Well, those second chance points are huge, and they only came because of their effort. Their work on the offensive glass is what's keeping them in the game. They definitely should try to continue to stay tough on the glass. It's been key so far. And that's going to do it for now as the second half is almost ready to get started. Back to Kevin Harlan and the rest of the 2K Sports crew. We're going to sit right here and wait for the end of the game and talk at you again. We have a close ball game on our hands as we get set for the second half of basketball. Take a look at what Kimball Walker's done. He's got 10 points. He has one steal to his credit as well. And Clark, he's just done a great job defensively. That one steal doesn't tell the whole story.
Hornets trail by five. Tipping off the second half, here's Steve Clifford's five. Kid Gilchrist and Williams are at the forward spots. Batum is out there with Kemba Walker. And it's Jefferson in at the center position. Pierce against Walker. Paul for three. But they recover it. Here's Jordan. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Jordan's got the lead up to seven now for the Clippers. And, the, and they're controlling the boards, Kevin. That's plus five in that category. And, guys, you know that rebounding is a huge part, a huge component of winning games. It's not a glamorous stat, but it's necessary if you're going to be a winning team. Now here's Kid Gilchrist. Six to shoot. And it's Walker penetrating. Breaks a big high pounce and goes in. Walker's got 12. <laughs> wow, risky shot there size-wise, but the incredible skill that he possesses allows that one to go. Well, the quick high release negated any height disadvantage he had right there. Griffin against Williams. The kick out to Pierce. That drops. And it comes off an assist from Griffin. Pierce has got his second basket. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket coming off a pretty pass. Well, when you look at the assist totals, heck, they've been clearly the better team. Now here's Walker. He's got 12. And there's the three-second violation. Just a little over 90 seconds gone in the third quarter. Walker against Paul. Reddick is in the corner. A chance there to push it to double digits, but it's off the mark. Hornets trail by eight. And here's Walker. Shoots off the screen. Again, the Hornets score. And, and, and Steve Clifford might not be the most famous <laughs> coach in the NBA, but he has plenty of experience, and everyone in the league knows exactly how well-versed he is as a coach. Paul dishes to Griffin. Off on the layup. Terrific job that time defending at the rim. I mean, it's not an easy task stopping that fella when he's headed to the bucket like that. Good job. Now here's Batum. He has five. Up top, Walker, covered by Reddick. Just four to shoot. Walker goes in. Misses off the left iron. Clippers leading by six. Pass to Jordan. And the wide-open shot from Reddick. Los Angeles with another miss. The Hornets have gone two of three from the field to start the second half. And Walker kicks to Williams. Charlotte moving it around. Screen by Jefferson. Walker's shot is off. Los Angeles has gotten a lot of looks from outside tonight. 5 of 12. Jordan kicks to Reddick. The feed to Griffin. Fades and shoots. That doesn't go either for Griffin. Unnecessary to go to the fadeaway there. It wasn't needed. Could have just kept it simple and taken the easy shot. LA's gone 1 of 3 from downtown since halftime. And he lobs it up toward the rim. Oh, a nice defensive play to disrupt the alley-oop. And then Williams slams it in. You know what? He wasn't going to wait around for any help on that break. Solo Sore performance all the way. How about that for a little bit of a glimmer? <laughs> I'm going to let it slide. And that last replay courtesy of Kia. After making it to the playoffs in 2014, the Hornets couldn't repeat the feat in 2015 a slow start probably Greg more than anything else did him in really disappointing season coming in with such high expectations and 33 and 49 just not good enough to get into the playoffs in any season Walker. 
ball passes to Griffin looking to get back on track here and they're going to count the bucket and send him to the line it could be a three point play you know for the Hornets they've not made consecutive playoff appearances since the team moved to New Orleans back in 2002 they just haven't been able to stay consistent enough to make it to the playoffs back to back years and guys what's rough for the Hornets is that they were a consistent playoff fixture in the late 90s still the team has never made it to the conference finals in its franchise history and that should be a goal for them in the coming years and an interesting byproduct of Blake Griffin extending his shooting range in his perimeter defense Clark his rebounding numbers have gone way down well it's hard to have it both ways Kevin I mean the team needs him to keep working on his perimeter game and if he's out on the perimeter it makes it tougher for him to get rebounds inside I love how he used his height advantage on that shot. And he had the nice soft touch with it, too. All against Land. Pierce kicks to Paul. Inside, Griffin. It's good, and he drew contact on the shot, so he will go to the line. A three-point play chance here. And on the topic of Griffin's rebounding, there's another force that helps submarine his numbers. Uh, DeAndre Jordan. O over the past few seasons, as Jordan's boards went up, Griffin's have gone down. Now, you think with the two elite rebounders that the team would finish better than 20th in rebounding last year, but, but that's another story. And the Clippers making a change here. Johnson's checked in. And a switch here also for Charlotte. Kaminsky's checked in. And back to Griffin for a minute. I think he will soon find a balance between his emerging perimeter game and his rebounding. Seven and a half boards a game, far too few for him last year. He's likely to return to double-digit rebounding averages, I think, sometime soon. Two on the clock. There's Wynn with the three. And it's the Clippers with the rebound. Jordan's got rebound number eight now on the night. Paul with the ball, and Batum picks him up defensively. Picked by Griffin. Paul dishes to Griffin. Pass to Johnson. Kicks to Paul. Shoots from the baseline. Hornets with the rebound. Kid Gilchrist has got three rebounds now in this one. Reddick against Land. Jordan with the rebound. Clippers leading by seven. Johnson, the pass to Jordan. And Reddick kicks to Griffin. Fades. And he gets it to go, hitting off the back of the rim. Griffin's got seven points for the quarter. I like the way he's not forcing anything, taking advantage of what the defense has given him. He's been a key contributor for them in this quarter. And the dunk by Jefferson. Yes. Nothing fancy there. Didn't need it. Nope. His only concern right now, Clark, is getting the points on the board, and I don't mean style points. I like the simplicity. <laughs> well, there's also style just with the fact that he's able to have that kind of a finish, though. Still, I like that pretty one-handed flush. Yeah, but you have to love that tough interior defense. And, Greg, that's exactly what he gives you. I mean, he's constantly making his presence felt around the rim. Now here's Kid Gilchrist. Seven points in the game. Dishes it to Jefferson. Buries it from about 10 feet away. Jefferson's got 16. Wow, and how huge has he been today? Really just giving his team a nice lift. Yeah, and he's kept them close enough to be within striking range. I mean, the deficit would be much larger if not for the efficiency of his play. And Los Angeles with some changes. Aldrich comes in for Jordan. And it's Crawford in for J.J. Redick. Hornets trail by five. Lynn dishes to Batum. Here's Jefferson, and there's another one for the Hornets. An excellent display of passing out there, fellas. I mean, eight of their last ten points have been assisted on. And they just keep finding the open man. Now here's Paul. He's got six. A shot's good from Aldrich. The Hornets have gone 7 of 12 from the floor since coming out of the break.
subbed in for the Clippers. And Stevenson comes in for Johnson. And a switch here also for Charlotte. Cody Zeller's checked in for Al Jefferson. Here's Lynn. There's a screen. Charlotte moving it around. And it's Kid Gilchrist penetrating. And the shot is long. Clippers leading by five. Crawford outside. Six on the shot clock. He feeds it to Aldrich. Stevenson inside the three-point line. Can't get it to go. And Charlotte will go the other way with it. To the middle. Here's Zeller. Yes! And a nice assist from Lynn. Lynn's got four assists in the game. The Clippers have gone 6 of 14 since halftime. A little cold from the field. Aldrich with it. Nobody near Stevenson. Stevenson missing again. The shot's there for him, and he's got to take it. I don't care if he doesn't convert. That's a shot he has to continue to take. And a wide-open look for Zeller. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. There's no getting around the simple fact that that's a shot he has to knock down. Overall, a down year for the Hornets in the 2014-15 season. A big part of that was that they would struggle on the road. Yeah, and you know they had playoff aspirations, but as you said, those aspirations derailed because of the road struggle. And, uh, oh, here, there's a whistle. He was going up for a layup, and while it looked like there was some contact, I wasn't sure they were going to call it a foul shot or not, but sure enough, they have. So he'll head to the free throw line. Spencer Hawes has checked in for Charlotte. And last season, the Hornets ended with only 14 road wins. Even when they made the playoffs in 2014, they weren't a team that traveled well. It's something the team needs to figure out in order to get back into the postseason. Now here's Kid Gilchrist. Seven points in the game. And Batum kicks to Lynn. And there's the pass to Kid Gilchrist. The Hornets need to get a shot off here. Batum. And the shot no good. A bit short. And, you know, as you mentioned, the road record for the Hornets was not that good. I mean, they really struggled late in the year when they seemed to almost give up. They lost their last seven road games and nine of their last ten. Now here's Kid Gilchrist. Josh Smith unable to get his shot to go. Lynn the pass to Zeller. He kicks to Kid Gilchrist. Zeller setting the pick for Kid Gilchrist. And some room here for Batum. Great use of the pick to create room for the jumper. Batum's got seven points. Paul dishes to Crawford. Pass to Aldridge. Feeds it to Paul. Smith outside. And here's Stevenson for three. Zeller grabs the board. Hornets trail by four. Clark, they've been looking out of sync offensively. You know what? A basket here would do a lot for their confidence. Los Angeles has gone one of four in three-point shots here in the third. Now here's Paul. He has six. Deep two from Crawford. And again, no good by the Clippers. Paul against Land. He dishes it to Zeller. Shot from 12. It's rebounded by Stevenson. Stevenson's got his fifth rebound in this one. Crawford left side. Crawford missing again. Charlotte has gotten blank from three-point land so far in the third. Still 0 for 3. And Zeller kicks to Lynn. And it hung on the rim but wouldn't fall for him. You know what? He's just stone cold right now. Oh! Wow, and that sort of... Showmanship is just deflating right now to a 
team trying hard to get back into this game like this. Yeah, definitely a jam with emphasis. A big apostrophe or exclamation point. How about maybe even a question mark, partner? Yeah, I would have to say there are a lot of questions right now from a defensive standpoint, that's for sure. And the wide open shot from Paul. And good, and it takes a nice bounce off the right iron and down. Hornets trail by eight. Now eight seconds separating the two clocks. They set the pick. Now Lynn. There's the dish to Hawes. And it's Kid Gilchrist penetrating. Excellent use of the screen that time. Kid Gilchrist has got nine. You know, the defense has got to do a much better job of fighting over those screens. And Greg, especially when the ball is in his hands. I mean, come on now. You know he doesn't miss too many open looks like that. And the basket by Stevenson. Lance Stevenson. The third quarter comes to a close. Clippers lead by nine. And we're just moments away from the start of the fourth quarter. Stay with us. The fourth quarter just moments away now as we welcome you back. Los Angeles leading by nine, stolen by Walker. Inside, it's Griffin and Jordan. Chris Paul and J.J. Redick are the guards. And it's Pierce in at the small forward position. That's who's out there for the Clippers. L.A.'s gone 6 of 14 with the three ball tonight. Just a little over 40%. Here's Paul. Here's Jordan, and he bangs it home with one hand. And, guys, isn't it great to see a player who, who works that hard on the glass at both ends. Well said, G. That's the way he has built, you know, his reputation. Clark grinding away 100% effort all the time. And you know, Kevin, all that effort pays off. How many of those spectacular putback jams do we see from this guy? A bunch. Up high and down hard with the one-hander. Got a little extra forceful with that one, didn't he? Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, and I think that's going to rouse up his teammates, no doubt. Reddick passes to Paul. Lock at six. Passes it to Griffin. They get it back. Back to Paul. The feed now to Pierce. Griffin a screen on Batum. Pierce kicks to Reddick. Off target there. That would have pushed the lead to double digits. Hornets trail by seven. And here's Walker. Jefferson a screen on Pierce. Jumper off the screen. Al Jefferson again. Jefferson's got 12 points here in the second half. Effective screen set there for the jump shot. That was the key to the play. Boy, he threw out some punishment with that two-hand throwdown. And Clark, now's the time to do it. Continue to attack that rim. Now here's Walker. Jefferson a screen on Paul. Walker dishes to Jefferson. Can't cash in on the 10-foot jumper. Los Angeles leading by seven. Paul with the ball. He's picked up by Lamb. And Reddick kicks to Griffin. It's Reddick on the wing. Back to Griffin. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. Well, you see Blake Griffin, and he is known for his huge dunks and ability to score, but he is a very well-rounded power forward. He's one of the best power forward passers in the league. Shooting for Los Angeles. And for Griffin in his Blake passing Griffin. often, you'll see him set up teammates, Taking Greg, for easy looks and dunks. And with the amount of times that teams have to double-team Griffin, that, that's huge. I mean, even when he's not scoring due to defenses focusing on him, he can still impact the game with his passing. And the Hornets making a change here. Kid Gilchrist has checked in.
And that one goes in. Two from the line that time. And guys, the Clippers last year, they were okay against the Eastern Conference, but not spectacular. You would have thought that with how well they, they were overall, they would have just really feasted on the East. Pierce kicks to Jordan. Redick with the three. That drops, and it comes off an assist from Jordan. This guy will really make you pay if you leave him enough room outside. Hornets trail by 12. As you said with the Clippers, Greg, they did decently against the Eastern Conference. But of the Western playoff teams, Clark, they had the second worst record against the Eastern Conference. And you know, things like that matter, Kevin. I mean, they struggled against Eastern Conference playoff teams, went only 6-10 and 10 against those teams last year. And watching Kimball Walker play, so explosive. An undersized floor general, nasty crossover. Really a scorer's mentality. Maybe too much of a scorer's mentality to ever be a great assistant. something for us right now Doris Kevin Doc Rivers was just addressing the plan with his team he gave his guys the green light to keep firing from downtown telling them listen I like the work you're doing out there keep finding those gaps on the perimeter they're giving us open shots and we're about three and a half minutes into the fourth quarter there's Pierce. That's good on the assist from Reddick. That's seven points for Paul Pierce. Ah, Greg talking about Walker. You have to love the way he competes. His willingness, Clark, to put the team on his shoulders and carry him. Love that competitive spirit of his. They're actually figuring out how to use him best, but he's such a dynamic offensive player. You've got to give him room to be creative at that end. The shot by Reddick, no good. Hornets trail by 11. Pass to Batum. Jefferson dishes to Kid Gilchrist. Six on the shot clock. Jefferson setting the pick for Kid Gilchrist. Hits the front of the rim and out. Los Angeles has gone outside a lot tonight. 17 times, in fact. Seven of 17. Paul can't get it to go. Yeah, but the hand in the face. It's critical that you contest his shots every time down the floor. Walker with it. Jefferson a screen on Paul. Batum for three. The shot's good on the assist by Walker. For three. Walker's got his seventh assist in the game. And, and that's why it's so important to really be a good screening team. You get a lot of open looks from it. Now here's Paul. Takes a three. Again the miss by Paul. And now here's Batum. The fast break opportunity. And Kid Gilchrist gets it to go in. Just a great job of attacking on the break. Yeah, you know, exploding to the basket like that, Greg, just as soon as that ball was going the other way, that's um, exactly how you want to do it. Just Mr. Reliable again here today, Kevin. I mean, they need his points, and he's producing. Back to Walker. Screen by Jefferson. Let's it go from the wing. Shot, no good. Good work defensively by Paul. Pierce kicks to Paul. He's looking for Jordan and finds him. And he floats in for the easy two. Credit the assist on that one. Those defenders look like they're out of gas. I mean, they're getting pushed around on the low block. Yeah, but they better rally soon because they've given up three straight buckets in the paint. Now here's Williams. Can't make good off the pick. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. And it's been a well-rounded performance. I mean, strong rebound and has certainly been, at, been at, the, at the center of it, but it's been good on a number of levels. Now here's Kid Gilchrist following the miss by Griffin. Jefferson kicks to Kid Gilchrist. 
Jefferson a screen on Reddick. Back to Jefferson. Battles through traffic and lays it in. Jefferson's got 14 points here in the second half. And just a nice combination of, of size and feel there. Terrific finish down low. And it's Paul penetrating. The teardrop falls in. And the Clippers lead by 10. Guys, that time you went for the fancy finish for us there, man. That was sweet. Now here's Walker outside Williams. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. Well, guys, no secret that Al Jefferson has never been known for his defense. Clark, mostly viewed as an offensive player. Yeah, he really is strong down in the low post. But last season, Jefferson went out of his way to change that no defense perception of it. And, and you know, it, it's what spurred Jefferson to kind of rededicate to defense when he realized teams would pick on him and, and make him the focal point of their attack. Good on the second free throw. And for Jefferson and his defense, players know when they are being targeted. So good for Big Al to do something about it. Jordan kicks to Paul. Pick by Griffin. Rebound by Williams. Williams has got his seventh rebound here tonight. Latoon passes to Walker. To the middle, here's Jefferson. The shot's good on the assist by Walker. And now it's 27 points for Al Jefferson. And his stroke has been dead on from the outside. I mean, inside, outside, it just doesn't matter. And, and that fourth foul, guys, might force him to scale back the aggression from a defensive standpoint. He does not need, nor does the team need, number five. Jamal Crawford, he's checked in for J.J. Redick. Cody Zeller's checked in for the Hornets. Pierce against Kit Gilchrist. Outside Pierce. Just five to shoot. Fader on the way. The shot no good. And the Hornets now going the other way. Now Walker. Screen by Jefferson. Kicks it to Kid Gilchrist. Again, the Hornets score. That coverage is just too weak. I mean, heading down the stretch, that sort of defensive lapse can cost you a game. Crawford dishes to Griffin. And down it goes. Dunk threw off a wonderful assist. Superb assist there. He played the role of the maestro on that. And Kid Gilchrist throws it down. Cutting into the lead with a huge one-hand throwdown. That's how to get your team back into it. Yes, yeah, sir. I, I tell you what, guys, that might also put a little spark into those guys. Crawford's shot is good. And that's almost automatic anytime he can get the ball in that position. Outside, Walker. Jefferson, a screen on Paul. Griffin with the steal. And here we go. Fast break. Paul's got it. The basket drops, and he gets fouled on the shot. One free throw coming his way. A great job getting the ball inside right now. Coach really wants them to show some physical presence and toughness here in the second half, and that's exactly what they're doing. Talk about a terrific game for Crawford. 13 points and eight dimes. And if I had to pick what he's done best today, I'd probably lean towards the offensive performance. Well, just to be a contrarian, I'm going to go to the other side because he's been just as impressive, I think, at the defensive end. Now, here's Walker. On the wing, but two. Off target from three-point range. Clippers leading by ten. Jordan kicks to Crawford. Picked by Griffin. Crawford, no one around him. Hornets with the rebound. Kid Gilchrist has got his fifth rebound right now in the game. And Walker kicks to Jefferson. 
That falls. Nice feed that time from Walker. That's 29 points for Al Jefferson. This quarter has brought out the best in him, fellas. Even though they're still trailing, he's been impossible to contain. Outside Pierce. Jordan with a screen on Kit Gilchrist for three. Crawford with another miss. Well, he had one three-pointer in the first half, but so far in the second, he's come up with goose eggs. Here's Zeller. Here's Batum. And there's the whistle. Fouled hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. No question. He got bumped on that shot. Yeah, the officials didn't need to talk that one over. It was obvious. And a closer look here at the scoring breakdown for the Clippers. And they haven't been pushed around in the paint at all in this game. They have been the aggressors. Right, you know, now, something else I've noticed break, is just how many of their baskets have been set up by assists throughout the game. And the first one drops. Both free throws good from Batum. Well, Nicholas Batum in this one, 12 points, and he's knocked down a pair of three-pointers in this game, too. And maybe it's time for them to set a few more screens for him up top and let him add to that total. Good. 16 points for Crawford. Their interior defense has been dismal. Yeah, they're losing the battle in the paint. Yeah, too many easy buckets coming from inside, and I think he wants to make that a point of emphasis. I would certainly think so. I mean, if they keep giving up those kinds of easy looks inside, they'll be in big trouble. One fifty one left in the fourth quarter. Here's Paul. Jordan the screen. Griffin passes to Crawford. Here's with a wide open look. Knocks down the three ball. And now an 11 point Los Angeles lead. We're seeing him bring that shooting percentage up now guys. The first half was a struggle for him. The Hornets pull it in. Zeller's got his third rebound tonight. Outside, Walker dishes it to Jefferson. Second shot opportunity. He lays it in. Jefferson's got 13 points in just this quarter. He's really stepped it up this quarter. Looks like he's determined to get them out of this hole all by himself. There's 57 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Paul for three. It's rebounded by Kid Gilchrist. Outside, Walker to the inside and stolen by Jordan. Oh, and here comes Pierce all alone. Right side, Griffin. Trains it from nine feet away. And that's just a little more for these fans to cheer about as they get ready to celebrate a W. Well, let the party start. The celebration begins, and they're going to let their guys hear it. They get it back. Here's Jefferson. That's tipped. And finally, they hit one. 
Jefferson's got 33 points. His hard work on the backboard really just has given them more opportunities to score. And here is Paul. And so Los Angeles takes the win. Some good moments throughout this one, but they have the clear advantage down the stretch. Yeah, and I thought good execution really played a big part throughout. And now let's catch up with Doris Burke, who's standing by on the sideline. Of course. Josh, congratulations on the win. What elements of how the team played will you take into your next game? Uh, just uh, the way we was able to help each other out on the defensive end. I was able to get out in the transition and then get some easy buckets. And uh, we just got to keep playing unselfish. We got to keep sharing the basketball and uh, limit our turnovers. And I think we'll be okay. Josh, your team always dangerous out in transition. Thank you. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Doris. Great interview once again. And that'll do it, folks. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and Doris Burke, this is Kevin Harlan saying thank you for watching the NBA presented by 2K Sports. We'll see you later. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Hey, y'all. Ernie Johnson here along with Kenny Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Welcome back for the presentation of our Jordan Player of the Game, Blake Griffin. No matter what they threw at him during the second half, it seemed like he had the answer and was able to find all the shots he wanted. Is there anyone in the NBA who's more straight up scary than Blake Griffin? I don't think so. Big, strong, powerful, with the skills to match that athleticism. If you're a defender in the post and you see Blake Griffin coming down the lane, the only thing you think is, uh-oh, the man is just a beast. The job he did down low was fan -shastic. That's right, fan -shastic. He had great understanding of the way the defense was set up in the paint. He had a ton of high percentage looks close to the bucket and converted every time. Nice game, real nice game. And that's it for our broadcast here tonight. But we're just getting started on a new season in the NBA. For Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, Kevin Harlan, and the entire 2K sports crew, I'm Ernie Johnson. We'll see you again soon.